All right, well, I had someone ask for like a really simple but uh, kind of straightforward video looking at, hey, like what are some of the basic features on a Gin Spirit? So I'm going to go ahead and take the 12 meter Gin Spirit out. Lens are pretty light, like, oh, I'd say probably six knots or less, so they're really, really light right now. Um, so let's just walk through a couple things. Bridle lines are kind of the thinner, kind of more perf higher performance, unsheathed lines. They're all white, uh, very high quality terminations, though. When I unroll this, you can see your leading edge has, you know, the formers. This is fairly standard on a high performance kite. On the tips, the tips don't use a Velcro on for like getting dirt out, so they just have like a really small little opening there that you can see. So that's all they've got, and it keeps plenty of pressure in there. Typically, when I'm setting up, Pull it out like this. In a light wind like this, it's not a big deal. Just lay it out. And this is the 12 meter. You can see the inlets here. Got a really highly formed inlet. So these do an excellent job of getting the air and ingesting air for launch. A little bit of wind. Shake these out a little bit. Again, you can see the, the lines here. So here we've got a ball on the leading edge for an attach point and a loop on the trailing edge. So I typically just always have a set of universal pigtails so I can do whatever I need to depending on the kite. For the airing out the kite, we've got this right here. So it's just the center line Velcro. The dirt out there, but we'll just tuck that in for launch. And go like that. So let's wind out some lines. I do have my little cloud bar on here right now. It's a 52 centimeter bar. Go ahead and do a launch. Again, I haven't done any sort of pre-inflation with the kite. This is just straight out of the bag. Let's say again, the winds are six to eight knots. I don't know if you can see the windsock over there. It's pretty dead. We'll just pop it up a little bit. Figure out the wind angle. And there it is. So, inflation on these kites is very good. You can kind of get a sense of the turn on the 12. Yeah, again, for light winds, it's. Yeah. And just they do have a lot of power for their size so I'm just kind of showing more so you can like if you run it really fully powered and with the trim all the way in you can get kind of your you can get these kind of turns where you you're kind of helicoptering the kite and this is the 12 so you can kind of see but if you, again, like if you want the nice carving turn, just don't pull the bar in all the way. And you'll keep the nice carving turn in it. And the winds are pretty light, but it's still giving me quite a bit of pull. And of course, the pop on the spear is kind of what it's known for. So it's just got a lot of power, but it also depowers really well. So, try to do a reverse launch here. And you can kind of see, like, 
yeah this is very light winds I don't even feel a breeze right now but just kind of pull back on the lean edge let it back up and you're off so relaunch is really easy in terms of the landing you know you just normally will pull a little bit in on the brakes park it in a lighter wind you can kind of walk up just take one side of the lines and walk it up on uh, higher winds you know I'd recommend killing killing the kite with your safety which will flag it out on one of the sides today the winds are really light though so don't really have to do that Here's a look at again at your bridles. So you obviously have your A and B's and then your brakes. So kind of a three-line cascade with your brakes. And uh, yeah, that's how that looks to basically when I'm gonna be Putting the kite away. Light wind just undo this here. Take a wing tip. I like to do have these on my kites like this. I actually don't mind if my lines are outside and I'll just throw them in. It actually helps keep things less tangled that way. But I'll try to wind it up keeping the stiffeners towards the front. It's windier, I'll wind it up a little ways and then go pack up my lines. All right, yeah, I like to line my or wind my lines up past the bridle the pulleys just so I keep those out of the rest of the bridles it tends to make things a little bit neater I'll just throw those in there like this and just roll it up a bit it's obviously a lot of different ways it's kind of a little bit of personal preference how you want to again I actually like throwing my bridles not totally into the middle it helps with untangling a little bit. Um, tangling I haven't found to be terrible with the kite. So. And there you go. Got the kite deflated. Let's have that done. Let's tuck this back in. You can obviously do this once you get the... I like to fold in thirds. Seems to work out well. There you go. What's in the bag, you ask? Well, let me show you. So, here's what you would get if you get a... Hello, Oliver. <laughs> Ollie wants to add his input. This is what you get if... So here's a brand new 15 meter Spirit. So, a really simple bag that's lightweight. Um, I really like these bags. They're everything you need in terms of just getting, packing the kite away. Nothing more than you do need. Like I've really found nowadays, there's just really no reason to have a technical pack with each kite. Uh, most people aren't using them for backcountry snow kiting and I have dedicated packs for that now. So, but you get a, get a sack, you'll get your compression strap. Um, inside here, I'll just take a look. I'm not going to fully unfold it because this will 
eventually be going to a customer, possibly you. Uh, and here's how your lines come. So that kind of gives you an idea on how the bottle lines come. Uh, folded really nice for packing. And uh, that's what you get. So all in all, a lot of performance in a little bag. Like I said, this is the this is the 15 meter, packs up pretty small. So you could even use this for backcountry if you want. I think I'm really looking forward to using the 12 meter this winter and getting it out. I think it's gonna be a phenomenal light wind backcountry kite. Um, I would probably not use the 15. 15 for me would be more for park and ride. Um, there's really not a lot of sense for bringing this one into the mountains. But there you go. That is the Gin Spirit. This is the 15. The one I was flying earlier was the 12. So hope that helps. Let me know if you got any other questions and I'll be happy to answer those for you.